Uh, salutations, my friends, and welcome back to TNO, one of which we are playing as that pretty cool Iberian unit. So right now, let's use agency branch upgrade, economy branch. So the last time, we made our decisions about who to invite into the uh, last council session, in which we will eventually call forth the Congress. We're finishing up our final debate. Now, there's a lot of comments from yesterday saying that I made the wrong choices or I should have done other things. Yeah, I, I probably sh could have or should have, but actually, I played this... Um, Quite a few times, but we have a momentous day in Hi Iberian history. After much toil and tra trial, or travail, and many trials and tribulations, Iberian Congress has reached its near climax. Or reached its climax. Today, the final debate is soon to be upon us, and all of Iberia holds its breath for the outcome. The debates thus far have not resulted in the shutdown of the government or the tearing apart of the nation, but this final debate could set off a match that changes Iberia in an instant. Decades long ramifications may occur from these debates going one way or another. All will be decided as a council convenes for this great meeting. Among the councilmen, rank the most important players in the ongoing political process. The highest esteemed representatives from the technocrats, liberals, conservatives, and army and regionalists have gathered to shape the future of an entire nation. We've come too far and sacrificed too much for this great day to descend into petty squabbling, for all of Iberia is counting on this council to deliver something that would stop the bloody decline of Iberia. Iberia has seen itself through violent separatism, civil war, treachery, public strife, the Bolshevik and German menace, but it could slip up now and forever remain a show of its former self. It is up to this council now to guarantee this great tragedy does not occur. Godspeed, gentlemen. So, as I was trying to say before that event stopped me, I did play this twice to the very end of, until we ran out of focuses, which we'll talk about this in a little bit. It's fine. It doesn't matter. So, I invited, I think yesterday, the conservatives, no separatists, technocrats, the people, but no military. I did that and followed it to the very end, and I compared it with the results with the recommendations of other people where you should instead invite technocrats, separatists, and the people and reject the military and conservatives. In the end... Basically, I got the, I literally got the exact same result. So, I've not changed anything from this episode, where we are right now, from yesterday's video. It's a still a pure continuation from the last video. So, in the end, it's going to all work out. Conservatives clash with technocrats. The attempted push for civil liberties reforms, pursued by the technocratic councilmen, has been met with an immediate negative reaction from the more conservative inclined members of the council. The conservatives, conservatives have been brutal in the condemnation of the reforms, stating in heated hushings, or hustings, that the proposals go against everything Iberia stands for, and the sort of treacherous liberalism will tear this nation apart and subdue it under an unpatriotic ideology. The liberals have held their ground in the proceedings, though, coming straight back at the conservatives and condemning them as tired out tyrants only looking to keep the Iberian people down and themselves afloat. At one point, the debate looked so vicious, it was a clear it was a surprise that the chairs were not thrown between the two competing sides. That actually makes things, makes politics a lot more interesting. In the end, there appears to be a considerable amount of pushback from sections of the Iberian political class against these reforms. While these reforms are apparently intended to simply improve the lives of everyday Iberians, their perception as a work of the fifth column, liberalism by opposing factions, has created a clear schism on the council. We weaken reformism, we lose political power, worsen Iberian stability. That's okay. You know, things happen. But yeah, so I did literally both sides, two attempts, Exact same outcome, so it's interesting to see what happens. A token autonomy discuss. As the council sat down to discuss the day proceedings, the specter of separatism came up once again and more of Iberia's most powerful shot down any hopes for drastic change. The reasoning was the same as it had been for the last hundred times. The capitulation to any form of regionalist demands would put the future of Iberia at risk. It would be a surrender to the terrorist past. It would be it would see the bold emboldenment of political violence, it would be the end of a project we worked so hard to rebuild and make a reality. It soon became all too clear to the majority of the council that the regionalists had a hidden agenda of unabridged separatism, and the proposals of a so-called special regions program needed to be shut down with the base. However, the regionalists and the wishes could not have just been disregarded at will. This is a new Iberia after all, so it was the council's preference that token autonomy would be the solution to the minority question. This was of course a rather vague and unenthusiastic proposal that may well see through. But it was decided that this was far superior to giving in to the regionalists and their alleged fifth column thought. So we get some stability, we get some more conservative democracy, we can reformism. You know, as long as we reform, that's my goal. I really don't care if we become conservative democracy, market liberals, or liberal democracy, to be honest. I really don't care. My goal from the outset of this campaign was for us to reform Iberia in any shape or war and save the Union. That's all I wanted. Whether we have a particular ideology leading the Union, I don't really care. A test too far? The Iberian political elite set themselves up with an enormous task to hopefully reform Iberia, using a series of debates as part of the determination process to determine the future of the country. The results were, unfortunately, less than spectacular. While the friction in the debates was not exactly overwhelming, it was still enough to undermine any sort of strong census that hoped to be established. Many in Iberia would have hoped for a solid vision to emerge at the end of these debates, but with a lack of agreement in 
certain key areas. The results are less than pleasant. It is unfortunate that the chance for change or consensus will not truly grasp here, but we must plot off what is the future of our nation at stake here. We may not get, we may not have gotten our desired outcome in the debates, but Iberia and his government will need to endure. These are testing times, and to give in now would only be a great act of treachery. The results may be disappointing, but they have not condemned us to ruin yet. We shall go on and hope to establish a future so solid consensus somewhere down the line later. We must plan on, despite our mistakes. So be it. Right now we're unstable. So be it. Call for the Congress. The delegates have finally arrived. Representatives of just about every political creed in Iberia are gathered, primed and ready to decide what direction Iberia is to take. Some are clearly here to seek radical change, be it for civil society or the autonomy of certain regions. Others are evidently here to make sure that these seismic shifts do not occur by any means disposable to them. It should be our duty for this to be a true and fair process so we are to ensure that these bad actors do not stop the will of the Iberian people for reform. Whatever their opinions may be, the long-standing issues that have plagued Iberia politically will hopefully be conclusively settled here. Now the Congress is to begin, the results of which will decide Iberia, whether t Iberia is to rejuvenate or decay. By our very will, we shall make sure that Iberia is set to rejuvenate with a fair and free Congress, improve, considerably improve Iberia's ability, and I do have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm during these trying times. <sighs> Hear that, military? We're still doing military austerity. Love it. Cool. So, my goal is to get through as most of the focus tree, the remaining focus tree, because I saw the end twice, three times, really, um, just to see what would happen. So, get through it as much as possible, because there's still quite a few focuses we have to get through, because they make sense, and the direction, like I said earlier, like, if we did the path that one, well, that some people, some of you guys wanted, England defeat Scotland, that's cool, um, it's, ex it's exactly the same route, exactly the same as the, one, the choices we've already made, so there's literally no difference. Not even, like, Mate, not even the choice of ideology. Like even the ideology was exactly the same, but the same choices I made. So, what we chose up here matters. It really does matter a little bit, but oh well. Let's go ahead and uh, let's see. We can sovereignty more daily political power gain. Oh, that's that's a that's a lot of more political power. Daily political power gain and political power gain. Holy cow! Dismiss the remnants. Let's get a picture of the old guard first. If it appears to reform, then it cannot do so while the old guard clings on to power like decrepit leeches. Leeches. They are clearly reactionary to the core and will block any attempts to at change. Quite frankly, they are an obvious and large block to any large-scale reform reformation that would save Iberia from eventual doom. These people are dinosaurs, hangers on from a time that is no longer relevant to the current situation Iberia faces. The worst of whom are old Spanish Falangas, who are res so resistant to change that they probably wish for Iberia to burn before it sees any fair change. It's time to dismiss these people from political life. And thus assure the people that a real effort at reforming Iberia is taking place. Good. And we have reformed the council. A new era begins. And hopefully, it lasts. Which it will. Cool. As long as we can pay down our debt, that's all. That's what I really care about. So, we're, so we are at 5-5... Five, five, well, well, one, 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 one. So we have six lines of making stuff. Six. That's not bad. I think we could probably start cutting down here a little bit more. Uh, ooh, you know what? I think it's time to cut. You know what? Let's cut twice. There you go. So we cut down twice. We got one, two, three, four. We still have four. We had six. We cut down twice. We still have four full lines of production going on at all the same time. That's so good. We have four, and we're still making more. So the debt is slowly going to get better and better and better for us. Better, better, better. Handel Catano. A major stumbling block to any attempts at making real progress to this process would be, of course, Marcelo Catano. As a newly and dictatorially empowered man, it is clear that if he was given any sort of leading role in the Congress, then he would act in a matter of bad faith and sabotage. We will ensure this is, does not happen. We made a promise to the Iberian people that change was coming, and that's what we shall do. To make sure Catano doesn't cause pro trouble or problems, he will have to be convinced of the purpose of these undertakings, and if need be, be pressured on so that he does not threaten the council congressional process. His ego may take a knock, but so be it. Iberia's future is at stake and will not be threatened by the reactionary tendencies of one man. Cool. Crippled sovereignty. Oh, wait. Oh, this is sovereignty. So we reduce crippled sovereignty. Oh, minus 0.5, minus 25%. I just realized that this this actually exists. This hurts us. I didn't realize that. <laughs> Whoops. I guess Bennett's uh, got a second inauguration, but I realized that that hurts us. Even though we're still getting over one a day. Barely one a day, but basically one a day. Uh, we still have an unstable union. Whatever. Uh... Okay, let's see, 14 million now goes jumps up to what? 1.2 billion? If we cut civilian spending by 15%, that's how much we spend on civilian spending. That's an insane amount. That is a huge amount. That's okay. You know, it's okay. Subsidized higher education, public health care, police, pensions, generous un uh, unemployment subsidies. That's quite a bit. Uh, Army department, cool. Handle Kitano, that's a good idea. 
do enable the department next, and prepare administrators. If it become a truly democratic state, then a real effort must be made to ensure the process runs smoothly and efficiently. This cannot be a half-hearted effort, wrecked from the start by inefficiency and bureaucratic incompetence. The administrators of civil society have a clear but tough job to do. The transition to a fully free and democratic state will have to be an arduous one, but it will be one that we will be well prepared for. All the actors involved will work in a position of good faith to truly transform my beard in society into one that is fair, and truly fair and democratic, of course. Uh, good. Over here, let's see, we could probably lower black arms trading, because we can. And neutral, reformism is 55 out of 100, so be it. And reserves, I mean, it's only 2 million, it does nothing. If I just inject it into the total GDP, you get like a million total. This does nothing as well. It doesn't even do, hit like that that much anyways, so it is what it is. But if we keep making factories, we do a good job. We'll be fine enough. One, two, three, four. Yep, yeah, four and a half, really. Not bad. As long as the deficit does not grow that much faster. That's all I care about. It's not bad. I'm tempted to do this by another amount, but... Oh, oh wait. Prepare the administrators. Limited sacrifices. Oh. Let's go ahead and rotate the generals first so that we can not have even worse ability to be extremely unstable. We are not naive. We know that these great changes are commencing with us. We'll have to have its detractors. Among the most serious of these antagonists would be the old guard of the military. The head honchos of the Iberian military are likely to put a spanner in the works if we were to go all the way with the process. In order to stop this, we shall shake up the military staff and rotate the generals of sap the power and influence. This should stop the old guard from acting up and allow us to continue with the process without any major hiccup. Lose despotism, fascism, political power, and prove our stability by quite a bit. That's all I can ask for. A little more stability. Hey, look, that went down even further. Nice. Very nice. And also, yeah, there was a comment from yesterday saying, this guy is so good, he doesn't even know who he is. And you are correct about that. That is crazy. Uh, someone recommended I use console commands to just manually go to war. But then another person also stated from the last video, yeah, that could actually screw things up. You could start off World War III or something like that really easily. So that's why I usually don't like doing that. I might like use console commands for like other mods, especially like Thousand Week Reich, if there's nothing else going on. But for TNO... Things are set up so carefully that if you, like, make a misstep, things can just fall apart. Like, speaking about the Iberian Union, things could just fall apart. But let's do limited sacrifices. If Iberia is to be saved, then the transitional process must occur as with limited kickback as possible from certain sections of Iberian political life. Compromises are needed in these testing times, and we all can't get what we want. Certain hopes for regional autonomy and full-blown freedom will have to be dashed, at least for now. Splintering would now would be costly and somewhat something that we'd like likely be unable to come back from. We cannot risk falling apart now at this key stage of the process. Doing so would put everything we've worked so hard for in jeopardy. Sacrifices have to be made for the good of Iberia and its people. We'll worsen stability, lose some political power, lose a little bit more stability, because why not? And it's okay. So we have conservative democracy led by Fraga, market levels led by Calavo, and liberal democracy led by Fernandez Miranda. We've got some libertarian socialism, and some of that. Air to ground task forces, cool. And we are done down here, so let's finish off our land auction with Artillery barrage and then preemptive technology. That'd be very nice. Very, very nice. Of course, we could still... Oh! Use more uh, divisions. Those are the tanks. Looking not too bad. And you guys... Not bad either. Also, apparently yesterday... Well, actually, look at that. Not bad. Hey, look. Did it go down at all? It didn't go down. But if I put it in here, it wouldn't, it wouldn't even gone up in either, so whatever. Cool, air department. Uh, let's see, there's another comment I need to get to. Ah, oh, yes, a couple, oh, I guess I'll get to it in a little bit. The Council Unchained. It's time to truly showcase our commitment to the process directed by the Iberian Council, though loosening certain restrictions that were previously put on the Council, though. They will now have a freer reign to guide the extraordinary transition that is taking place in Iberia. This will also show the faith that the Iberian leadership has in the Council and the good work it is doing. A mandate will be established in this, by the direction of one of trust and the transitional process that is taking place. The Council now has our full confidence to do what is needed to achieve this transition. More daily political power, stability, and improve our stability. Oh, what I was trying to say before I interrupted myself was that apparently from a comment like a few episodes ago that I went back to check, if you're building factories, they cost fuel to build apparently or something like that. Yeah, fuel gain from refineries minus 14.4. I did not realize that. That's why we were losing fuel for a while because we keep building more factories. I thought it was because we were training. Maybe. Or, and our ships as well. But I didn't realize that factories actually cost fuel. So that actually makes sense. Thank you to whoever left that comment. And everyone else who knew that, too. I didn't. Ah, coffee's a great thing. <sighs> Love it. Tighten the window. Let's see. Uh, speak to the governors, and then we'll tighten the window. So. It should have been obvious, but... 
by now to everyone that with a democrat democratization process speeding up all of Iberia's most influential and powerful people must be convinced of our cause in order to make the transition as smooth as painless as possible the governors of Iberia rank amongst some of the most important key players in the political scene we shall speak to them to address put down and put down any concerns they have about the process and thus help guarantee a much smoother democratic transition that would be a great thing and we got some better tanks finally finally let's go and improve the armor because and breakthrough oh yeah armor and breakthrough yes please Nice, even better tanks. Now all our tanks, which we might not even use, have 93 armor, not bad. And I did throw on tanks, tank recon for our tanks. So, really tanky there. Very nice, let's go over here. Fight uh, black market arms trading, that'd be good. We still have the Gibraltar Dam down here, which kind of sucks, but whatever. Hmm, can we place a dam, Chairman? <laughs> I can still abandon the dam. Yeah, I don't know, man. I think we're going to keep it for now. Ooh, nuclear, reac nuclear reactors. Don't mind if we do. It is almost 1970. Almost. 200. Uh, we're going to make some better destroyers, maybe. Actually, what am I making? I'm making frigates right now, aren't I? It doesn't even matter, really. I am making frigates. So... You know what? We're going to go with destroyers next, then. I haven't even made frigates. He's not even has zero progress. Uh, that's sad. I really wanted to do well with them. But time the window. This was a time where Iberia, for better or for worse, had to be ruled with an iron fist. History may not absolve those who once ruled over Iberia with a firm and authoritative hand, but from now on things can change. The age of authoritarianism in Iberia has come to an end. Rules, laws, and accountability will put an end to full-blown despotism in our nation. It's no longer acceptable, nor wanted to lead with a selfish and cruel heavy hand. Something far more open and democratic will now hopefully take its place. Less despotism, more conservative, market liberalism, and liberal democracies, and improve our stability. And currently, we are how stable. Not stable, moderately stable. Not bad. And let's look at GDP because I love that number too much. Not bad. 1.86. Not going to help out too much. And slash out immediately. Look at how much. We just got like 1.3 or 1.4 billion dollars by slashing civilian spending. That's how much it costs. That's so much. So much. That's okay though. China modernizes. Wow, in 62. Oh. Gu Pre Chinese President Gao Zongwu wanted to modernize. Hey, we finally affected that. Nice. Great hopes are on the horizon. Can the Pacific live up to its name? Well, let's hope that they do well. So that might benefit us as well. That'd be kind of cool if that would happen. We'll see what happens. Passive defense upgrades. Yeah, why not? How about we do a uh, last one of that? That'd be very good. I could grab. More. I could have these guys do something, but now nah, I'm. I'm feeling kind of okay with that. A new true state. It once seemed like Iberia would be stuck in its own political mess forever. Competing antagonistic power game and bureaucratic inefficiency, all tied together by the tight grasp of, of authoritarianism, once meant that it seemed Iberia would be sent to the ash heap of history. Remarkably, this seems to be no longer the case. With the thankful success of the democratic process, a new state can now rise out of the old Iberia. A new democratic Iberia will take its place, saving us from the trials and tribulations of what could have been a failed state. We are now ready to become a truly democratic state, averting what could have been a significant disaster. So, the party, political party's popularity can be tracked in the decision scream. We get more political power, stability, multi-party system, and the social democracy, social uh, liberal democracy, market levels, and conservative democracy have names, and the UN becomes the ruling party. Oh, UN. Improved stability. Well, by UN, they don't mean United Nations, they just mean, uh, what was it? Union Nacional? Something like that? I think that's what it is. Cool. Minus five million in deficit. You know what? I'd rather have that than, any, than a deficit, so. One, two, three, four. We're working on the fifth one. Not bad. How are the roads looking out here? We actually, look at that. You know, say what you will about authoritarianism in Iberia, but look at the effects it had on the roads. We can build roads all over the place. 10 out of 10. Nice. Even though we haven't really focused on Africa too much, we're, we're, we're working on it, you know. I don't think we own anything over the seas either, so it's kind of okay. You know, it is what it is. No more slash slash? I like to slash slash. Okay, okay. It is 69. Good times. Good times. Nice. Go and repair or go home. Go home, guys. Go home. I'd love more manpower, but I keep slashing the budget so we don't have any more manpower. Nice. And here we go. It's lagging a little bit because we are going to change our flag. Now we get a little bit of blue in our Iberian Federation. We have reformed, my friends. A little bit. We have a true new state. Let's see if we can hold it or contain it. Oman is on fire? Great. Preparing the Iberian elections. 30 years of dictatorship has made the prospect of a free and fair election purely theoretical up until now. Franco's relinquishment of power to the council has changed that, which means that Iberia has entered a crossroads which 
where the way in which we choose organized elections has been pushed to the forefront of political discourse. Whether it be the question of foreign obser observers or the possible extension of suffrage, the future of Iberian democracy and the Union Nacional's political hegemony now lies in the halls of the council chambers with decisions which will shape the lives of Iberians for generations. From the conservatives to the reformists, the lines are being drawn on the question that will have to be answered in the coming months. A liberal democracy and authoritarian democracy. The rural urban political divide, the answers to these questions will decide the fate of Iberia on both the domestic and world stage for years to come. Ah. <sighs> And preparing your democracy. Is this auto bypass? It is not. Before venturing into the first free elections held on the peninsula in over 30 years, there are some critical matters to attend to. As the final steps towards democracy are taken, we'll do our best to ensure that this transition keeps the nation pointed in the right direction. It's clear that this path was a necessary one for the stability of the Union, but exactly how this process will play out is still pretty much undecided. Ooh, we got more GDP now. Nice. Liquid reserves? Don't mind if I don't spend that. Yeah, that's so small. That's money. That amount of money is so small, it really doesn't even matter in my mind. A few million? compared to everything else, it doesn't matter. Let's set up the elections first. If we're not prepared, the 1970 elections of the new Iberian Council will be prone to a number of logistical issues. The extent of the administrative burden of organizing Iberia's first democratic elections will be felt in the long and short-term pr pr preparations, as well as on Election Day. It is therefore essential that all bases are covered as the work begins on setting up one of the greatest events of our history. Oh boy, was this going to go all down in a ash heap? It might, it might, it might. Get rid of these IFEs. I don't care about IFEs. Uh, guns looking really good. We built a lot of guns in this campaign. Because we needed them. We really did. And let's go ahead and do the observer question. Certain members of the Iberian Council are proposing that the elections be monitored by international observers to ensure that the integrity of the democratic process. They argue that this will improve our diplomatic standing among the democracies of the world in addition to solidifying the legitimacy of the elections. However, several council members have spoken up against this proposal, labeling it as an infringement of Iberia's national sovereignty. Some even ostensibly pro-democracy members are among those opposed to the measure, making this a clearly divisive issue. People want to interfere in our elections? Let them try. We might let it slide. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I just want a carrier, man. I just want a carrier and a sub. That's, that's all I want, man. Why, why, why can't we have that? So, drop electoral votes. It's a contentious issue whether or not to, the current voter registration plans are too strict or perhaps even too expansive. Which appearance should be among those who take part in the critical choice for the faith nation? nation's future. The conservative elements of the council advise caution decrying any suggestion of expanding suffrage in the elections. Cry loud cries are, however, heard across the country urging the council and the caudillos to ensure everyone's rights to participate, with the minority of council members speaking up on their behalf. The merits of both arguments, in addition to the logistics of the matter, are sure to influence how the register is drawn up. Question observers. With the newly granted powers, the reformers are in the council are in the position to truly form Iberia into a democracy. However, this means that the way in which we structure our electoral system is still up in the air. It's up to them to determine what the new Iberia should look like. The first issue that requires discussion is whether foreign governments should be allowed to monitor our election to ensure that the election is run fairly. Whilst it would help to legitimize whatever party wins and by extension our political system, there are words among many of the more nationalist leading people that this would infringe on the sovereignty of the nation and potentially give the country's weak ground observer status a chance to influence the election. That being said, the hardline reformists demand that we allow total transparency in this upcoming election, as the peninsula hasn't seen a free election since the days of the Second Spanish Republic back in 636. And they fear that authoritarianism could return without these international checks and balances. We can reach a compromise between the two by allowing the observers, but, but in a limited fashion, in order to garner a better reputation amongst the democracies of the world. Sovereign states? Now let's take a look. We make it look good. We have nothing to hide. We get more stability. I kind of like more stability. I don't care about authoritarian democracy. Uh, yeah, it looks like the market liberals and conservative democracies might win, but we've we've got nothing to hide. You know, we're we're straight straight shooters here, for now. Uh, let's see, 25, 25. These guys are really neck and neck. And let's go ahead and decrease the trading, so we can see democracy in Iberia here. The front runner is Alianza Popular, which I believe is the conservative democracy group. Yes, it is. They're barely winning though. Uh, get the ballot boxes. If elections are to happen, every registered voter should have the ability to get a ballot box and cast their vote. If a voter is too far away from the nearest voting station, then he may be dissuaded from partaking in the process, an unfavorable outcome from a democratic point of view. This is especially a key issue in rural areas, as there are small communities across the vast expanse of Iberia's frontier or interior, far from the larger cities. It is in these often forgotten communities where special actions may be needed in order to ensure the voter's voice is heard. And time for the setting up the suffragist list. The question of suffrage is perhaps the most important question in setting the election. Who deserves the right to choose how they're governed and who doesn't is a very controversial issue amongst the council members, and three main proposals have been put forward for the council to vote on. The proposal put forward by the conservatives detailed a plan which would continue to exclude the people who cannot vote in undemocratic elections back when the Cadillas reigned supreme. This has come under heavy fire from the hardline reformists and would surely outrage the people disenfranchised by it. However, the conservatives argue that by allowing these people to vote, they would only lead to instability in our newly christened democracy. The radical reform reformists have declared that suffrage should be expanded to everyone over 18. While they only hold a minority in the council, they seem to have a popular support throughout the country, judging by the rallies which have been held, by visited by tens of thousands in order per to pressure the government to open up the franchise. The final proposal, seen as a compromise option between the conservatives and the hardline reformers, details universal suffrage with an ID registration 
registration system. This system would potentially dissuade some of the elements with the conservatives want to ban while fulfilling the populist desire for universal suffrage. No Basques, no students, no commies. Ooh, mm. Too many actions like this may end up causing anger among liberals and leftists. Any with an ID. Mid suffrage must be expanded. Uh, I can't think. I like the ID one, just in case. You know, that, that seems kind of like a smart idea. Anyone with an ID, just to prove who you are. Market liberalism. I kind of want market liberals to win. I, I, I'm, I'm okay with the conservative democracy. I'm not a huge person right now going for liberal democracy. I, I, I see, like, market levels as kind of a balance between liberal democracy and conservative democracy. Uh, you know what? Screw it. Let's go with it. Suffrage must be expanded. Let's see what happens. Should reshuffle this a little bit. multi layer steel ceramic composites. Very cool. Because we want to get as much armor on those tanks as possible. We don't care how much damage they do as long as they can roll over people. Advanced armor skirts. I love skirts. Cool. So, the AP is conservative, 86. The Partido Renovador, Renovador Democrático is 80, even though market liberals technically have a higher percentage. I'm not sure how this is counted. Conservative democracy is 23%, and these guys are 25%. So, I I'm not sure how the democracy in Iberia is actually running here, since technically the PRD should have higher support, but that's just me. Get the ballot boxes. Special police de deployment. Recently, there have been increasing talks about the possibility of voter intimidation in the coming elections. The growing concern is leading many to call for increased police presence on election day, where the Guardia Civil will take an active role in defusing any political or potential confrontations and preventing any unrest. Despite the outrage, most of the officials in charge of the election preparations are assuring the council that any such fears are overblown, and that everything will be under control when the voting begins. Preparing the ballot boxes. Iberia has always been a sparsely populated area with much of the electorate, being located in rural areas where getting the ballot boxes is considerably harder than in urban centers. This raises the question of how exactly we should distribute the ballot boxes to ensure that all voters can reach them and get their say in the election. Representatives from rural areas have asked for disproportionately more ballot boxes than in urban areas because of the worry that there won't be enough to make sure that the people in these small communities can reach them on election day. However, representatives from urban areas claim that this is unfair, that the current plans for the distribution should suffice, and that rural represent representatives are trying to have their areas overrepresented. Regardless of what proposed plan we choose, we will be making either the urban or rural areas feel threatened by representation, which could turn into apathy for the people who live in these regions, potentially undermining their faith in whatever government is elected. Rural areas clearly need more. Uh, this optimal distribution is fair. Uh, I don't necessarily want to see these guys win. I really don't. Because I've seen them win several times. Market levels seem a little bit more interesting. But we might need to save this for later, this option, so... Rural areas clearly need more. So they go up to 26%. You guys are down to 24%. Which now skews this to 80 and 91. Yeah, that's pretty close, but still. Current... Is Cuierda Republicana is irrelevant? Austerity? I think so. The liquid reserves? Let's do that. Teach them their duty. With the administrative hurdles overcome, it is now time to take up the beer and photos to raise their voices and to partake in their civic duty. It is all well and good to lay the material groundwork of the electoral process, but a new state of mind must be cultivated among the people. Decades without elections has left Iberians complacent to the status quo and apathetic towards battering the country's future, or bettering the country's future, a trend which will no doubt be hard to break. In time, we will believe that, we believe that our bold actions in this moment will be the spark to eventually free Iberia from the shackles of the past. And ready the Guardia Civil. A worried share, may, share by many in the population is whether the kind of voter intimidation that took place under Cadillo's rule will carry on to a new electoral system. As a result of this, the idea of using the Guardia Civil to protect the polling stations has been brought up to the council. You think the police would be able to break up any conflicts that could occur, and even as a deterrent to dissuade troublemakers from showing up. Furthermore, it would be a signal to our citizens that we are truly committed to a dem democracy, encourage them to participate where they otherwise would not have. In spite of this, the general consensus among the officials we have put in place, or in charge of organizing the election, is that the fears of the voter intimidation are exaggerated, and that the deployment of the Guardia Civil would be a waste of police time and resources which could otherwise be spent elsewhere. We don't need it. I don't see any voter intimidation. <laughs> I don't see any... Oh, wow, look at this. The Guardia Civil could turn a blind eye... Turning a blind eye could result in chaos on election day. Uh, I'm gonna go with to order. We need it. We need a little bit more order here. And let's be real, Franco's probably not going to win. The UN is probably going to lose, which is, you know, it happens. Actually, do we have... Uh, no more lowering black market trading. And teach them their duty. And now we shall do the first campaign. Shortly after the announcement that the people will partake in upcoming democratic elections, interest groups and political activists have begun congregating, organizing, and merging into increasingly larger parties and coalitions, some of which, fall apart, which are falling apart as quickly as they rose. As the days go by, several larger parties seem to be taking shape, increasingly worry causing worry among the members of the Iberian Council. Our national party, which will take part in the elections, Union Nacional, may need our help to more than anticipated if these parties keep growing and consolidating their movements. The discussion around what level of interference is appropriate in the campaign is, for the reason, going beyond, or going behind, closed doors in the council chambers. And it begins. 
So, we should probably get another event here with Guardia Civo. No. Everyone has a duty. Man, that is a thick island. Those are some thick, thick islands. Uh, what's going on in the world? Do we have any conflicts going on? Oh, so, uh, Russia, Russia, Russia. Okay, just Russia. Pretty normal stuff. Cool. Special media coverage. I'll do... Oh, no, no, I want to save that. I want to save that. Let's do special media coverage. As the campaign takes shape, the media will have to cover the elections and advertise their arrival to the people. A viewer's population must be informed of the momentous event if we are ever want to say the election was a legitimate one. Through print, radio, and TV, the aim will be that no Iberian voter remains ignorant of what has come. As the coverage is broadcasted throughout the nation, we will be watching the democratic process unfold with bated breath. Cool. The campaign begins. As parties begin to take shape and serious threats to the Union Nacional start to arise, it has become apparent to the council members, hold on, my, my apologies, that some election interference may be needed to secure a favorable result. In the back doors of the council chambers, all but the most diehard reformists are discussing which measures to take to send the tide of liberalism. The use of such interference would undoubtedly harm the future prospects of Iberian democracy, but for the more restrained reformists, the choice between democracy whether they lose or, lose or stability where they win is seriously being contested. Those sympathetic to the rule of Franco and Caetano wish to actively fund Union Nacional through proxies and Swiss bank accounts to ensure that no other party can match their level of funding. Others have considered using suppression to ensure that no liberal parties can become elected or even be a part of a coalition. For these moderates, so long as some kind of conservative party wins, Iberia will be safe and the reforms will be limited. Naturally, the reformist ideologues have expressed disgust at the thought of illegal funding or suppression of parties, or reject the notion that the only the Union Nacional can guide this country sufficiently. They claim that only free and fair elections can allow the people of Iberia to choose the direction of their nation dem democratically. Actively fund them, which... Mm -hmm. Suppress the liberals, which I don't like. I want to get more market liberals in there. Free and fair campaign elections, we're going to do that. We're going to do free and fair. That's the way we got it. That's the way we like it right now. 9.67 goes down probably a little bit more, maybe... Maybe not. Okay, whatever. 26.59, 25.11, 25.21. It's pretty, it's pretty divided here. 26.2, 26.7, 25.5. Oh, my goodness. Uh, rallies in the city is a campaign style guide. Although it's undeniable that extensive media coverage is needed, certain restrictions are going to be necessary in any campaign going forward. There are those who deem this decision hypocritical, but there are much needed, clearly much needed me measures to ensure stability as we approach the most important date since the Union's founding. Unhelpful criticism of the way the elections are being run, certainly do nothing but the feign the flames of fan the flames of anger, and will be barred from use in any political campaigns or organization. For this reason, a selection of words and phrases are being banned in political advertisements, speeches, and all over forms of publicity. Cool, we get more political power that way. Which we don't really need, we have over 1100 already. Uh, there's one, two, three, four, getting the fifth one done. Good, good, good. I can't wait to see what happens in the elections. This this mod and 2020 and any other election really possible. I love looking at the elections in Italy or Germany in our timeline, or even France, or anywhere in Europe, or even like other places too. But let's do rallies in the cities. Iberians in the urban centers of our nations are rallying in increasingly large, large marches, excitedly anticipating the elections. The larger Spanish and Portuguese cities, as well as the larger cities of high minority populations, seem to be following this trend. Their enthusiasm for our commitment to democracy is encouraging, but some less savory elements may benefit from the energy in the cities. Leftists and liberals alike appear to be gaining traction in these areas, a potentially worrying sign. Oop, death of President Ho Chi Minh. A tragic day. You know what? As long as libertarian socialists and authoritarian socialists don't win, I think we'll, Iberia, Iberia will work out all in the end. 25 points. Oh, oh. So now we're 27.4, 28.0, 23.55. Oh, come on, market liberals. Meetings in the villages. The rural areas of Iberia are home to the often overlooked silent majority of the nation. It is in these regions where traditional values remain strong and the church still enjoys an elevated place among its communities. Voters in these areas may be inclined to come out in large numbers to support strong and conservative voices, but in the end, this all may depend on how we engage with, the lead with them leading up to the elections. Energizing these populations may be the key increasing their numbers at the polls. More conservative democracy, so democratic rallies in the cities. The rallies that Iberia has, has seen since the process of restoring democracy started have only started getting larger and more radical. The excitement for the upcoming election can be seen, or even heard, in most of the remote places. While this is a promising for the future of Iberian democracy, there's been an increasing worry among some in the council and rural areas that the wrong people may, be, may see a benefit in their eagerness for democracy. And they're both separatist leftists. All these groups have seen a resurgence since the rallies began, and every day their support grows wider and wider. Many in the council have expressed disgust at the prospect of a liberal or even a socialist government and have considered a media blackout to halt this momentum and prevent what they see as a red tide poised to sweep the nation. Rural representatives have also expressed support of the measure, wishing to keep leftists and cosmopolitan urbanites as far away from the community as possible. The more optimistic within the council have stated their opposition to the blackout, believing that they can beat back their pol political enemies on the merits of their arguments rather than resorting to dirty tricks and backdoor politics. Blackout the media? Let freedom ring? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get this focus done first. Because I want to get that democracy, popularity, influence, or increase done first. And then let freedom ring. So it helps offset that increase. 
Boom. And now we're going to let freedom ring. Uh, this is... Oh, actually, this is going to cause anger between people. I don't care. Minis in the villages, let us do... It's now or never. With the campaign in full swing, the airwaves are being del deluged by talk of the elections to come with excessively... Successively. Larger crowds gathering in cities and towns across the nation. Meanwhile, political organizations in rural areas is taking place with an unexpected level of energy. <clears throat> A few young parties have been su successfully consolidating their support throughout the early weeks of the campaign. Most notably, the conservative Alanzia Popular, the economically liberal P Partido Renovador Democrático, and the socially liberal Union Republicana. The stakes are as high as ever for our nation as, well as we enter a new era of democracy. The rural democracy. So we're at 30%. Oh, oh, liberal democracy is doing pretty well right now. Rural democracy, though. So far, the series has been the loudest and most excited for the election. This does not bode well for the future of Iberia, should the liberals or even, God forbid, the socialists use their advantage to win the election. There's been no socialists so far, really. In order to counterbalance this, many within the council have begun to discuss ways to get rural, God-fearing conservatives to lead the way with their faith and tradition, providing a solid bedrock for the glory of the nation into the coming decade. By utilizing our ties to the church, we can ensure that those who hold a nation together not only come out to vote, but out to vote for the right party. With enough propaganda in the right places, we could turn the farmer and villager voting blocks away from Alanzia Popular and towards a Union Nacional and potentially secure victory in the election. Yeah, I don't know, man. The National Party isn't looking good. That being said, many of the moderates in the council have stated their position that an AP victory in the election would be satisfactory as we share many of the same values. The more liberal minded in the council have proclaimed that there should be no meddling in these areas and to allow the people by beer to choose the government that they wish. However, whether these council's members are truly loyal to the Union Nacional has been debated since the council was granted its additional powers. Uh, no. Conservative democracy, liberal democracy. A liberal democracy is already doing pretty well. Keep our hands out of it. Uh, I'm not going to do authoritarian democracy. I'm probably going to do AP just because they're, they're looking pretty bad right now. Uh, hmm. Actually, if I draw it away, hmm, we'll do AP. We'll just do AP. Why not? So now it's 29, 26, 25. Oh my goodness. So the liberal democracy is winning. Okay, so yeah, the Union Repub Republicana. But. The AP is still overwhelming at 106. How does this calc how's this calculated? Hmm. I'm not really sure. But that's okay. Whoever wins wins, right? As long as not those god dang socialists. Jornada de la Reflexion. I assure you that I did not take this decision lightly. While the chaos of the past years failed at putting an end to our union, I say this with certainty. Iberia was on its last legs, indeed. It would not have been, it would not have survived this far if not for the invaluable help provided to me by the Council along with the competent leadership of Portugal's Cadillos. Having seen the work of the Council towards the survival of our union, I am now confident in the system or in the value of reform. The system of government as it stands cannot last much longer. Despite how it pains me to say these words, I realize that stepping down is the only way forward. I have too many memories and too much hope in the people of Iberia to let you down. I believe that you have it in yourselves to lead the union into a brighter future. Thank you for having put your trust in me. Ah, oh, Franco, wow, oh, please don't leave, but really leave, but really don't leave, but leave, please. Ah, oh, now he gets to be looked at as a very controversial figure in the history books of Iberia. And is it, the U oh, the UAE is here. Oh, wait, the they have the Italian flag. Oh. Oh. Well, no wonder they're an associate state of the Italian, F okay, that's kind of cool. They're an associate state of the Italians? Huh. Why does Turkey own so much of Iraq? Oh, it must be Kurt, the Kurds. Ah. Uh, construction? Oh, yeah, let's cut that. Wow, that sucks. Point two one. Oh. The first Iberian election. The church bell rang six times. On any other day, there would be a few people meandering around on their commute to work, but this was not like any other day. The announcement of Iberia's first free elections had been made. The jubilation tinged in the air, leading its mark on anyone who ventured out that day. All the excitement and the anticipation that had been built up to the announcement had burst in out into a celebration larger than any other in Iberian history. For one day, all peoples in the nation felt united and all differences had been ascended. The old wept at seeing how far the nation had come from the days where the collapse felt inevitable. The young finally had the chance to be represented and to choose a government they weren't born into. As the day marched on, the crowds only got bigger, the cheers only got louder, and the spirit of the democracy only grew stronger. For Franco, this was just another day. He didn't get up early, nor did he eat breakfast with any haste. However, as the agent Caudillo left his residence for some air, he saw the crowds. Crowds he had not seen like since the days of the victory 31 years ago. He had only reluctantly given additional powers to the council, and throughout this process he had gone back and forth whether it had been a good idea, but seeing the people of this nation cry out for, with such elation caused a single tear to drop from behind his glasses. Iberia had been saved. Let it begin. Woo, this is... I don't know, this is exciting. The election arrangements. Ballot boxes are beginning to be delivered throughout all the country as applications flood the Electoral Commission for volunteers to help tally up the votes and voting registration forms have been created a mile long of paperwork. The talk of organizing elections is over and now the practicalities of running an election have begun to take place. 
Now that the decisions made by the council in preparation for the elections have begun to take shape, there have been criticism from all sides regarding the handling of the logistical side of things. Some believe that the numbers of police deployed is too much, while some say it has been too little. Some have stated that there's not enough ballot boxes being sent to rural areas, while others say there's, there's just too many cents. The old adage, you can't please everyone, applied to the politics, seem to be closer to you can't please anyone. Only time will tell whether the measures taken for electoral preparations were the correct ones. Will it be enough? Do we want it to be? We'll see what happens. I can't guarantee anything here except that we have a little bit of liquid reserves and we're going to keep slashing down that debt as best we can. Minus 10 million? Yep, could be better. Actually, once we get one, two, three, four, once we get this a little higher than we get. The restoration of the parties. The campaign trail has officially begun, which has led to the restoration of old parties and formation of new ones. Currently, minor parties begin to emerge everywhere as anticipated, but uh, through mergers and arrangements, minor parties are taking shape into a few major parties representing the ideological makeup of a modern Iberia. At the moment, the parties that seem to be gaining traction are the Social Liberal Union Republicana, the Conservative AP, and the Economically Liberal PRD. The newly found diversity in the Republic has shocked the old guard to believe that many of the views now being openly advocated in the streets had died out under the Cardillo's watch, but to their dismay, both the red banner and the flag of the Second Republic is being paraded around with seemingly no consequences. With the decline of the Union Nacional, reactionary governments or elements within the party have been Provoked to believe that a stronger hand will need to be the guide the UN to victory in the election. Hopefully they aren't too difficult. Oh boy. So we're at 27. Versus 29. Versus 26. Oh boy. I don't know. Let's increase trading. Okay, so the UR organizes the Galician Rally. Galicia, not as violent or loud as the Basque and Catalan separatists, does have a substantial separatist movement. This made the UR's decision to outline their plans for a minority representation in the city a clear sign of the commitment to the cause of peaceful devolution. The rally itself was rather short, but the speech was almost drowned up by the cheers. Once the rally was over, brawls sporadically broke out across the city between Galician nationalists and unionists. City officials announced the UR speakers for incitement and violence and disturbing the peace. Torquato Fernandez Miranda had refused to acknowledge the announcement, staying committed to the slogan of freedom and autonomy for all of Iberia's children. These words would have gotten any man in prison mere months ago, but now has become the rallying cry for the up-and-coming Union of Republicana, a party dedicated to reducing the inequality empowering Iberia's minorities and seeing that the process of democratization has brought to its natural conclusion. The party has seen widespread support in urban centers from moderate minority nationalists movements from and from the most hardline reformers in the council. Promising a total break from the politics of the past, will they be able to muster enough support for such a radical agenda? How could this be possible? Ah, uh, well, I guess anything's possible here, right? AP announces opposition. Those frolicking crypto commies would be the death of this nation should they be elected. The fact that they have as much support as they do only goes to show the de degradation of traditional Iberian morals, morals and values that have occurred in our society. We as a AP vow not to only halt this menace but reverse the degradation and make Iberians a part of the nation once more, said Manuel Fraga Irebarna, leader of the AP. Following the Union Republicana, Repu Republicana rally in Galicia, Fraga has released a scathing article in the conservative ABC newspaper targeting Fernandez Miranda and his party. Criticizing the inflammatory anti-Iberian language and highly idealistic and unrealistic policies, the article has inflamed public opinion with its use of de divisive, uh, divisive language. To accompany the article, Fraga has released a manifesto in which the policy positions of Alianza Popular were showcased. As expected, it calls for aggressively combating terrorism, maintaining a uni unitary style of government, and strengthening the bond between the church and the state. Naturally, this has come under very heavy fire from the liberals who claim that AP wished to maintain the status quo at the time when reform is needed, with the conservatives arguing they only wish to preserve what makes Iberia great. Excellente. Oh man, 27. Market level's got to get a say in there too, right? 25, 31. Oh, oh, you never know. You never know. Yemen is falling apart, which is, you know, whatever. We don't really care right now. PRD calls for unity. With tensions rising among the UR and the AP, the PRD has issued a call for unity, inciting the inflammatory language used by both sides as a catalyst for future political violence. Where this call will fall in deaf ears remains to be seen, but the publicity around the sun has given the PRD a boost to the polls and has propelled them to the lead for the title of the main center party, with an emphasis on the civility needed in politics. Promising a focus on economic liberalization along with the vague promises on social reforms, the PRD has managed to gain support of the urban business leaders and the money that comes with, along with them. Given the stagnation that occurred under Cadullo's rule, their message of adopting a laissez-faire approach has resonated with many of the people most affected by the pitfalls of the old economic system, and the more measures measured tone on the social issues could mean that the PRD stands to poach off voters from both other parties. Whether they convince enough people in the marketplace of ideas to win elections remains to be seen. Complete irrelevant, probably. Alright, cool. So now we're 27.7, 26.30. So the liberal democracy is still in the lead. 101, 106, 114. Okay, yeah, whatever. The elections are not rigged. So the FET 
E. de las Jones merges with the Union Nacional. With the rising liberal sentiment that plagues the nation today, we have seen it fit to officially merge ourselves with our Portuguese sister party. Despite some minor grievances, both of our parties strive for a strong idea built on a solid moral foundation will now do so as a singular force. Alejandro Rodriguez de Valcarcel, former leader of the FET E. de las Jones, and now the leader of the Consolidated Union Nacional. In an unsurprising move, the Spanish Falangas have merged with the Portuguese Union Nacional. I'm sorry, I'm butchering these words. The growth of the Liberals in the PRD and UR have pushed the two parties together in an alliance in hopes that by working as one, they can avoid splitting the vote and secure victory in the election. While some of the hardline Falangists, uh, Falangists have stated their opposition, they don't have the numbers to effectively undermine the party, and as such, nothing is expected to come of it. This should hopefully hold the Liberals back. Uh, guys, I, I, I don't know. 16%. That's still... That's... That's your fourth place. You're still fourth place. You're not even third. Membership of that group slips. While there are some speculations that the UN would lose members to the newly formed parties, the amount that has fallen has left the UN party officials gobsmacked. Following the ascension of the URAP and PRD, members who had previously been suspected of having liberal or even moderate conservative opinions have left the party in droves, accusing the UN of betraying the democratic principles it sought to instill after the restoration of free and fair elections. According to some, this exodus has been a major blow to the party and has removed the electo electability that they once held. However, uh, De Valcarcel has publicly stated that the loss of membership is a good thing, as it means the party has been purged of liberals who seek to undermine it. Privately, he has been seen wandering the party's headquarters, and any attempt to communicate with him only results in a volley of curses and seething anger. How far have we fallen? Covertly supporting a party? Oh, yeah, that's a, this is the next event we're going to get. Ooh, I love skirts. Ah, oh, skirts. Very nice. Very good stuff. Prototype re reactive armor? Yes. And... Covertly supporting a party, following the exodus of the liberals, it has become apparent to the government that there are very serious threats of a liberal party winning the election. As a result, the question of secret funding has been brought up behind closed doors in order to prevent the Partido Renovador Democratico, or God forbid, the UR, from taking over and carrying on with even more reform. However, who this funding should go to remains undecided. The UN has seemed like the obvious choice of if any extrajudicial funding would be needed, but some of the government feel like they've fallen too far to be saved, even with the covert support. Instead, there's been a proposal to fund the AP, as they've been seeing have been seen as a strong choice in winning the election. Although there are some differences in policies between the two, AP is still a conservative party opposed to the liberals, and therefore broadly agree with the vision of the UN. They could, for this reason, be the key to preventing liberal influence from disturbing the status quo. That being said, some have stated their opposition to any election tampering and wish to ensure that the people of Iberia get to choose their own government, whether that be a liberal or conservative one. Best hope? Conservative democracy improves stability. Hmm. Oh, we're extremely stable. Hmm... I'm going to say committed to, to democracy. We'll see what happens, because they're still ahead, aren't they? Yeah, 114 versus 106 versus 101 versus 67 and 15, but I don't really count those other two. Nah, it's minus 124, so logistical issues arise. While the government had predicted a large amount of registrations, the amount of applicants had flooded the Electoral Commission, and there are serious worries that not enough ballots will be printed to provide everyone who is registered. If we weren't able to meet the demand or the press was to find out, it would seriously harm the government's image and weaken the people's trust in the government to provide a free and fair election. However, it would be costly to able to be print enough ballots in time for the election, as printing houses would be subsidized to work over time. That being said, it's not immediately certain that the amount by which we would need to be to print will fall short of the demand. Should there be only a few thousand people who do not have a ballot, there's a chance that the press wouldn't pick it up and we could avoid the cost. Additionally, by targeting areas that are predicted to vote against the government, it could give us a push needed to secure victory. What we don't know won't hurt them. Print more ballots, our image is key. Go and do that. Uh, good. So, election day. The days have finally arrived. A new chapter in the short history of the Iberian Union, parties and politicians have risen and fallen, but today will mark the destiny of Iberian democracy for years to come. And for the first time in the decades, it shall be the people of Iberia who decides the outcome. The size of the crowds on this momentous occasion dwarf the ones seen where the election was the first announced, and while the feelings of excitement still remain, there's something else accompanying that that wasn't there before. A feeling of unspoken trepidation. Questions that plague the mind of average of the average Iberian. What if it all went wrong? What if all this was for nothing and the old regime remained stable, uh, rebranded now for a new decade? There were celebrations from dusk till dawn, but that anxiety held over like a... St it's a stalastite, ready to fall at any moment, appear ready to spear the newfound liberty. Antonia, Isabella, Leo, and Gabriela could not have less in common. What common ground does a bureaucrat, a student, a banker, and a nun share? Usually very little, but today they all felt like feeling in their stomach. As they gripped their secret ballots, they were all united in the foreboding apprehension about the country's future. No words were exchanged, but they all shared in the comfort of each other's worried glances. If the future were to, bleak, were to be as bleak, they wouldn't face it alone, but together. While in power, it would be easy to say that Franco could never really connect with his people and understand their plight, but even he could feel the uneasiness in the air. The people wanted to reform that he'd been so sure of, but if they didn't get it, what would they do? 
who had faced the wrath of disillusioned masters. Franco was many things, but Clueless was not one of them, and he realized how this position, however ceremonial may be, could be the target of populist outrage. After coming to this conclusion, he has decided to visit the cathedral of his hometown of Thirol for the remainder of the day to pray for everything to work out as intended. Here it comes! Oh boy, I was still making civilian factories, we are barely. Nice. Alright. And, okay, the AP seizes victory, even though. Mm, 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 that's kind of okay with me. That's fine. With uh, perhaps the widest support base of the four parties, AP has been able to storm the election and will go on to form the new government of Iberium. Throughout the election, staunch Catholics and town residents cheer as conservatives claim victory. The news has received a warm welcome on Genova Street in Madrid as AP members celebrate outside the party's headquarters. Afraga and de Amaral, party president and general secretary respectively, have both prepared a speech that they intend to give in the Plaza Mayor in Madrid to the cheering crowds present there. With a letter from Franco and Caetano congratulating AP for the victory in hand, Fraga used the occasion to mainly congratulate the party, and more specifically himself, for seizing victory against his liberal opponents and how they intend to lead Iberia into a new era of strength and prosperity. Several journalists have noted Fraga's narcissistic tone throughout the whole speech, seemingly placing himself above the rest of the party and by extension. The contempt blatant Amaral's glares at Fraga during his speech, however, many of these journalists have denounced as being simply overpartisan. Uh, Amaral's speech has a lot more, been a lot more humble and focused on the party's goals moving forward, highlighting the necessity of cooperation with the other parties, our respect for cultural differences, and an Iberia with a strong moral framework built upon the social doctrine of Catholicism. Better than nothing. So I, this time, I really, really tried to get at least more market liberals or even more, you know, liberal democracy to a degree, but there's not really much I could have done else that could have gotten either one of these two. It is what it is. And Iberia on the world stage, my friends. We are now ready to return to the world stage after we've been absent from it for so long. In the past we took prior to the establishment of Iberia and the ones since uniting may have been difficult, but we are finally ready to look forward to the world once again. There are multiple options for us to take, depending on the status of our nation and those around us. Across the Atlantic lay the Americans, a reasonable group. To the north, perhaps a little more like-minded person in Berlin. And in the Mediterranean, maybe we can meet with our old friends once again. This takes only... That takes quite a few days. Cool. But, uh... Oh, and we have also this one up here. Alanzia Popular Victory. So, the conservatives have won. If you'd like to read this focus, go right ahead. So, cool. I kind of really wanted market liberals, but it is what it is. I can't fault them for that. We might do a connection to the OFN first. Co Hispanic Common Heritage? Oh, Tokyo Standoff. Has an Empire of Japan gone mad? Probably. Uh, political power, more stability. They get more stability. Visit to Washington would be kind of cool. Expanding Atlantic trading? I like that. American military advisors are not bad. Import modern designs. So basically, this is the end. Well, we're not done yet, but this is the last new unique focus tree for Iberia. After this, there's nothing else. So I don't think we'll be able to get through all of it in the next video, but in the next two, and the last video will probably be shorter than this one, as well as the following, the immediate one. The last video will be shorter than these third to last and second to last, and that's okay. Minus 20 million, so be it. Good, good. I'm going to start building up a few more refineries, too, just because we could probably use them. Build in Madrid and build it right there. There you go. Two at a time. Good. One, two, three, four, five. All right, construction. Uh, I love you. But now we got to slash you just a little bit more. Now, liquid reserves. Uh, 31 million is not bad. Cut that down. Nice. I'd be on the world stage. Let's do moral, morals, political power. Uh, daily political power gain, less social democracy and liberalism, censor press, demilitarize the police, there's no question, mm, patriotic education, oh, we get a racial slot, why not? A nation of tradition, God, fatherland, family, these were the words Franco used as the basis of his rebuilt Spain. And why not? Do these notions not define Spain, the most pious of the Catholic nations and oldest of the colonial empires? New vigorous leadership need not mean a reversal, of course, and we know a good thing when we see it. While change may inevitably come, for, come with time, Franco's motto, motto shall, oh, for now, remain our motto, but for the health and happiness of all Iberia, not just Spain. That's weird, when we, what, but the elections, we were 27, uh, you were not, not, not super high. I don't know. I just wanted to, because both times I did it, off screen, choosing the path that someone else wanted, that other people wanted, and the one that we chose for my, that we chose from the last episode, both times I got conservative democracy. I don't know, hmm. Because trying to fight the, do this democracy stuff, I don't, I don't know what like how this is like structured. Like maybe the party ideology isn't the best measure of stuff, but even then, it's a little uh, confusing to say the least. What's going on here? Oh, Gibraltar dam payment. Oh, who cares? Let's go through at least one more focus, and we'll call it an episode. Nice. Yeah, I, I know I don't have to be doing this fuel stuff, and we're, getting, we're importing more anyways. But I think it'd be kind of nice to make Iberia just a little bit more 
resource independent. And preemptive strikes, good. And now we're basically done with our land auction once that one finishes up, which will be good. Defensive decisions, Gibraltar Dam, no one cares. 47 army XP, very good. Very, very good. 1400 political power, wow. A nation of tradition, which will end with a patriotic education. Well, that question, one of the worst crimes perpetrated by the commies, anarchists, and syndicalists during the Civil War was their attempt to tear down the very national identity of Spain itself. The Portuguese should be thankful that they were spared this indignity. It's clear that this improper attitude only found a foothold thanks to the vulnerabilities created in the modern mind by the overwhelming nature of modern life and the rapid rise of poorly thought out education among the masses. Some more liberal minded types might complain of the stuffiness and rigidity of our new education program, but instilling a strong sense of nationhood in our youth is vital to ensure that the continued success of Iberia is as a strong willed and free nation of the world. But that's all the time we got for today. This episode almost lasted an hour long, but I hope you enjoyed it. Regardless, if you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we shall lead Spain with a conservative democracy. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day. And I meant Iberia, not Spain. See you later.